This book is called The Little Hippo and it's by Anya Klaus and it's illustrated by Geraldine Elshner. The Little Hippo. This story begins in ancient Egypt during the happy age of blue hippos. At that time, if you gazed at the watery marshes that line the cities, you could see the hippos' backs curled up along the horizon. As the good masters of the River Nile, the blue hippos basked in the tranquil waters. All around them bloomed flowers, and as time went by, the river's many plants left a mark on their sunbathed skin. Fish would brush against them, butterflies would land on them, and birds pecked without fear at these strange turquoise creatures. One day, the youngest among them, the one they called Little Hippo, became a friend of Antef, a tall old man with white hair. Every night, side by side, Antef and Little Hippo would admire the setting sun. The sun dies each day to be reborn each morning, the old man would say. Soon I too will fall asleep, just like him. Then a long journey will begin. When Antef left for this unknown kingdom, and when he was laid below the ground, Little Hippo laid down beside him and fell into a deep slumber. Time went by, days, months, and centuries. Hidden deep inside their tomb, Antef and Little Hippo seemed to be forgotten. Then, one bright morning, at the first light of dawn, shovels began to dig through the earth. Hands began to search slowly through everything, one by one, the diggers removed a multitude of objects, each one more precious than the other. All this commotion woke up little Hippo, who became frightened and hid beneath a stone. It was only then that he noticed his size. Instead of growing all these years, he had been getting smaller and smaller. As soon as he got the chance, Little Hippo slipped out into the open. Nothing looked the same outside. The city had vanished into thin air, and in the river, the blue hippos had disappeared. Where were his brothers, his friends, his parents? There, were not even a single, there was not even a single flower growing anywhere, not a single bird flying in the sky. Wind and time had taken them all. I need to find my own kind, thought Little Hippo. Perhaps they've left for distant lands, the one which Antef so often mentioned. And so he began his journey, a minuscule blue spot in a big golden desert. He scampered for days. The more he walked, the more sand stuck to his skin, covering the beautiful turquoise color of his back. Soon he began to shine as brightly as the sun. Little by little, underneath his feet, clay began to replace the warm sand of the desert. Houses lined the road here and there, and when the wind blew clay dust onto his body, Little Hippo took the appearance of a setting sun. In the distance, a forest appeared. Little Hippo was so happy to see the trees and plants again. He rolled around in the leaves and ate them with delight. When he came out, he was as green as a prairie. Little Hippo kept walking and for what seemed like an eternity. At last, he saw tall silhouettes in, on the horizon. A thick fog floated in the air, heavy with dust and smoke. Exhausted, Little Hippo lay down and fell asleep. 
<clears throat> when he woke up, he looked just like a gray mouse. Little Hippo sighed. He had been traveling for so long, he would never find his long last an lost ancestors. When he caught sight of water flowing gently in a meandering river, he slipped into it and began to cry. But all of a sudden, as the current washed over his small round back, he saw them. His parents, his brothers, his friends, they were all waiting for him in a pyramid made of glass. Filled with joy, little Hippo ran to join them with all the strength that his little legs would allow. Ever since that day, Little Hippo has slept blissfully beside his family and friends. Meanwhile, around the earth, all hippos bathe tirelessly in the hope that one day they'll recover the beautiful turquoise color they once had. And it, is, it was found in a tomb in Egypt in Dra Abul Anagra, the Egyptian earthenware made during the 11th dynasty. And it is in the Louvre in Paris. And in the back, it has all kinds of little things about what hippo represents. And Antef leaves for an unknown kingdom. Where does he go? Where are the blue hippos now? And this book is called The Little Hippo, if you're interested in reading it. Hope you enjoyed it.